If you fly Tiny Whoops, you've probably got a zillion Tiny Whoop batteries laying around, and they probably all have a pH 2.0 connector on them. But Beta FPV says that your batteries suck, and they could perform better if instead of a pH 2.0 connector, they had a BT 2.0 connector. The argument is that the pH 2.0 connector has poor electrical conductivity. It has tiny little thin stamped metal pins and it has high resistance. And if only you had a better connector like the BT 2.0 connector, then you would get more power, longer flight time and just better overall performance from your batteries. I've run this theory by some other experts and they say that that's a bunch of hooey. They say that the actual limitation of these tiny whip batteries is not the connector, but the cells themselves. In other words, the cells are so crappy that there's no point having a good connector. You need to upgrade the cells. I've got the answer. I put some batteries on my fancy schmancy battery test machine. I tested all the connectors and I am going to tell you who's right. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. Before we get into the results, I want to tell you that the test I did is different than the test that you may have seen some other people doing. For example, Oscar Leung did a test where he bought two of the same battery with BT 2.0 and PH 2.0 connectors on them, and he tested the batteries. But he didn't actually test the exact same cells. And I don't say that, I don't say that to like dig on Oscar. Oscar's amazing, and I love the work that he does. But science is about taking the stuff that somebody else did and going, how could I make that even better? And Oscar's results did show that there was a performance advantage to the BT 2.0 connector. But what if it just so happens that the cells that his vendor is putting BT 2.0 connectors on are better cells? If you were beta FPV and you wanted to make it seem like the BT 2.0 connector was better, wouldn't you have a motivation to put higher quality cells on your BT 2.0 batteries and lower quality cells on your pH 2.0 batteries and skew the results? To be clear, I'm not saying that beta FPV did that. I'm saying that as a skeptic and as a scientist, you got to think of these things. And that's what I did. So what I did is I purchased happy model, 300 milliamp hour, tiny whoop cells. And I purchased those because Happy model 300 milliamp hour packs, they're not really known to be like the highest performance packs you can get. And I also did that because they come with wire leads on them, as opposed to the packs like this GMB pack we're looking at on my screen right here, where the pH 2.0 connector is soldered directly to the cell. And those wire leads let me do something that I haven't seen any other tester do, which is test the exact same pack cut the pH 2.0 connector off it, solder on a BT 2.0 connector, and rerun the test with the exact same cell. The only thing that's changed is there's a different connector. And I did this not just on the Happy Model 300 milliamp hour packs, but I also did this on some GNB 450 milliamp hour packs. Now GNB packs are widely regarded as very high quality packs, and the 450 milliamp hour packs are bigger than most people are going to fly on a tiny whoop. The idea being that we can test the theory that if only we had better cells, then we would see an advantage. But based on the crappy cells that we're all running today, maybe there isn't an advantage. So what were the results? Now, the first thing I did was a 1C discharge on these batteries just to validate like what their overall quality level was. And actually I was impressed with the results. All of the happy model and all of the GMB packs exceeded their rated milliamp hours at a 1C discharge down to 3.5 volts. Next, I performed a five amp discharge first with the pH 2.0 connector that came on the cells, then cut the pH 2.0 connector off, solder on a BT 2.0 connector and rerun the test. So let's start with the results from the GNB 450 milliamp hour pack where we can be reasonably sure that the cell is not the limiting factor, that the connector is mostly what is affecting the results. And in this chart, the blue line is the BT 2.0, the red line is the pH 2.0, and it should be pretty freaking obvious that the BT 2.0 clearly was holding higher voltage and discharged for longer time. The difference here is about 0.1 volts pretty much through the whole discharge curve. And some people hearing that result say, well, 0.1 volts, who really freaking cares? 
Remember, at 20,000 kV, 0.1 volts is about 200 more RPM at the prop. And the whole discharge of this battery, because it's a 1S, you go from 4.2 or 4.35 volts down to about 3.0 volts, maybe 3.2 volts. You've basically got one volt through your whole discharge curve. So gaining 0.1 volts is 10% more voltage. It's 10% of your whole discharge curve. I think we can all agree that that is not nothing. But what about the happy model cells? What about the more normal 300 milliamp hour cells that we're all running? Do you still see an advantage there? Or does the cell now become the limiting factor, as some have claimed? And the answer is yes, you do see a result even with these lower grade cells. Again, we see about 0.1 volts through the whole discharge. The cell in this case is not the limiting factor. So the takeaway here is there is absolutely a performance advantage of going from pH 2.0 to BT 2.0 of about 0.1 volts at 5 amps. But what about at higher discharge rates? Now, I want to preface this by saying that some tiny whoops are not going to pull more than about five or six amps, even at full throttle. I know there's some people out there who have put a tiny whoop on a test stand, they clamp it down, they go full throttle, and they see it pulling like 18, 19 amps. That is absolutely an outlier. Even something like eight or nine amps at full throttle is pretty extreme. But what, what about the batteries themselves? Can they even perform to this level? Here are the results of a 20 amp discharge using the GNB 450 milliamp hour pack. And for the record, that is a 44C discharge. And we can see that with the pH 2.0 connector, we basically, it just, the, the voltage cratered and died. The battery couldn't handle it. But with a BT 2.0 connector, the battery was able to hang on and discharge 0.7 watt hours and it lasted for 41 seconds you actually got a meaningful discharge at 20 amps using the BT 2.0. You basically didn't get anything using the pH 2.0. So is BT 2.0 better? Yes, it just definitely is better. And the higher your discharge, the better it gets. Should you switch all your packs over to BT 2.0? I mean, I guess it depends. If you've got a whole bunch of tiny whoop packs and you're happy with the way your quad flies, then maybe it's not worth it to you. And in fact, the lower the discharge rate of your quad, the less you're going to care about this. But if you're going for the absolute best performance, if you're a tiny whoop racer or anything like that, and especially if you're running one of these new like 19,000 kV, 20,000 kV, you know, these guys are just battery killers and they need all the voltage they can get. You definitely, definitely should be running the pH two or the BT two. Pff, embarrassing. You definitely, definitely should be running the BT two point connectors. They do make a difference. They're going to give you a little bit longer flight time and a little bit more power during the during. And you just need everything you can get. Before I sign off, can I remind you? These tests cost money. Got to buy batteries. I have a helper who runs the tests for me while I'm busy making videos about other stuff, and I pay him for his time. And if you value test results like this that help you get better performance out of your quads and spend your money more wisely, one of the ways you can help support me is by becoming a patron. There's a link down in the video description. You can become a patron for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I earned it. You can also just hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, watch the videos. Of course, that helps a lot as well. And there's a link to my ultimate FPV shopping list where I have recommended products with affiliate links. And that's another way that you help me out and uh, support me. That's it though. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.